How you doing? PJ Street here with uh, personal trainer Cincinnati.com and Force Fitness and Performance in Cincinnati, Ohio. This is my first video blog. Um, love contributing to the blog. I want to thank you guys for following me. Uh, but I'm getting really busy uh, with the gym and the training business. It's getting more difficult to sit down and actually type out blogs. So I thought this would be a good uh, alternative. So I hope you guys like it. We'll see how this goes. I'm no videographer, um, so I apologize if this stuff's a little rough uh, until I get the format down. At any rate, today I want to talk about uh, posterior chain uh, training and a new exercise that I've come up with uh, that I really, really like. Um, you know, I'm not like Nick Tuminello or uh, Brett Contreras, two really uh, esteemed strength coaches. Um, if you guys follow them at all. Their innovators are always coming up with cool new exercises. I typically just, uh, you know, I know who to follow, and if I like something that somebody else is doing, I, aim, I implement it, incorporate it in my programs. Uh, but every now and then, uh, I come up with something uh, of my own uh, that I think is beneficial, and, and uh, hopefully that, that you guys can implement your own workouts. So today, again, we're going to talk about posterior chain training, um, specifically today the hip extensors, the hamstrings, and the glutes. Um, Several years ago, I remember reading an article on testosterone magazine, uh, tmuscle.com, and I can't remember the author off the top of my head, but there was an exercise using uh, the big super bands that you could purchase from eliteFTS.com um, called a band stomp, where essentially you'd uh, choke a band up above your head to a power rack um, or a bar, and you put your foot inside the band, and then you'd have to stomp down through the band tension behind you. I like the concept of that exercise, it just never quite felt right to me. Um, so I was screwing around the other day and I kind of came up with something similar, and it's actually, this is pure hip extension. Um, if you don't feel this exercise in your hammies and your glutes, there's something wrong, because this thing really fired me up. Um, I'm gonna cut this off and go in and show the exercise demonstration and come back and talk a little bit about its application and some tips and, and uh, technique points and what have you. So um, again, I'm just calling this the single leg standing super band hip extension. You, know, you can call it whatever you want, but that's 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 what I'm coming up with. So uh, I'll be right back. We'll check out the exercise demo, and then uh, we'll talk some more. Okay, so you guys can see that was a pretty cool little movement. A um, couple form pointers. You want to choke that band uh, to something. I don't know. I'm six foot three. I had the uh, the bar and the power rack probably just slightly higher than that. You could probably just as easily um, put it on the on the chin up bar and the power rack. Um, the only problem with that is you might have a hard time getting your foot up there without some assistance from somebody else. But at any rate. Uh, it, you know, it's kind of like a single leg standing reverse hyper motion without all the, all the stress on the lower back. Um, the other nice thing about that exercise is that, you know, you're getting variable resistance. So as you're coming through the range of motion, that band's developing more and more tension throughout the range. And by the time you get into fully contracted position, I mean, your hammies and glutes are firing really hard. So when you get your foot up there, you want to get it about the middle of your shoe between the ball and the heel of your foot. You want to keep a slight uh, ankle extension um, and you want to just get that quad nice and tight and then just hinge from that hip and come straight back. Okay, you don't want to get real ballistic with this and get out of control. Okay, you just want a nice smooth motion. Okay, again, you're going to work this for a six to ten rep range. 
I have what I think is referred to as an average band that I'm using. Um, you can fool around with the band tension, you know, find something that's challenging, but the, you know, you want to be able to get at least six to ten reps with the band tension. You don't want to use one of those big, thick super bands that guys use for uh, band resistant squats. That's going to be like doing a one rep max. Um, I think I have the green average band uh, from Elite FTS. That's what I was using in the video. I think it's called an average band. It might, might be called a strong band. I'm not sure. Um, but it works well. Um, the other nice thing is the plant leg that you're balancing on, you're getting a lot of work there too in that lateral subsystem because you're stabilizing really hard. Um, if you're one of these functional people that like to do unstable work, that exercise is not going to work. So I can already tell you that I'm going to have people saying, well, you know, take your hands off the power rack and, you know, make it more proprioceptive. That's bull crap. Okay, you want to have a stable base. You want to be holding on to the rack. Um, and, you know, you want to really focus on getting a nice pull through. Give this one a shot. I think you guys are really going to like that one. Um, could be a great deadlift assistance exercise. Uh, can be great for injury prevention. I would classify that as a single leg uh, hip dominant exercise. Okay? So that's where I'm going to put that in my training templates. Give that a shot, fool around with it, screw around with the band tension, find something you like, and, uh, you know, again, be very strict with that movement. Don't get ballistic with it and uh, reap the benefits.